As always, this episode is sponsored by my go-to brand for anything makeup, Revlon. Hey everybody, I'm Ashley Graham, and this is Pretty Big Deal, where confidence is key. Every episode, I get to pick the brains of brilliant, inspiring, honest, new and old friends who are a pretty big deal. Today, we are talking to a true multi-hyphenate, Shay Mitchell. Shay is an actress, entrepreneur, content creator, author, and so much more. After her breakout role in Pretty Little Liars, Shay built a loyal platform of millions across social media and YouTube. Hi. Hi. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you for having me here. Yes. This is so cozy. Uh-huh. I just want girlfriend. Friend vibes. Yeah. Whatever. I love it. Super chill. Um, congratulations. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Every time I see somebody who's pregnant, I'm like, wow, I'm so excited for you and I'm so happy I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Let's be honest, but you look insane. I just have to say, like, Thank incredible. You. No, you look so beautiful through your pregnancy, too. Thank you. I love how you hid it for so long. Six months. Yeah. That was hard. That was you're hard. you're so active on yeah. social and YouTube. and Yeah, there were a lot of just, like, headshots, you know what I mean? And, and or a dog pound and, like, and, like, an oversized shirt. Oversized shirt. Yeah, you know that trick, too. So, yeah, it was a lot of hiding. I just wanted to come out with it when I wanted to come out with it. Mm-hmm. I want to get into, like, all of that pre-announcement um, stuff because I went through a lot of stuff, too. Mm-hmm. But now that you've literally just pushed your daughter out of you, mm-hmm. um, what do I need to know? Oh, wow. <laughs> can we get here? We, please get as real as okay. possible because I am taking notes. Listen, I wanted to experience both sides. I wanted to experience it without the epidural and I wanted right. to, after going through it for 15 hours, experience it with the epidural. So the plan walking in was no epidural? No, the plan was, let's see what happens. I didn't have a birth plan. You I, didn't? No, my only birth plan was Matt needs to be to the side or behind. <laughs> okay. There is no in front. We're gonna put tape right here and he is, this is the no Matt zone. Okay, because Justin, my husband, he wants to watch. Oh, sure, of no. course. Oh, in front. Yes. That's amazing. Why? What? Right, exactly. And that was my thing. So Hello? that's what scared me a little bit. So I'm like, you're to the side. So he <laughs> was to the side. That was my only birth plan. That was just like rule number one. And then everything else was, let's see what happens. Because you don't wow. know. You can't, what can you plan for? Yeah. It's, no, it's not up to us. It's whatever happens and what's safest for the baby. Right, because, you know, you hear about make a birth plan, make a birth plan. And so, like, I want to walk into similar to you. Right. I don't want an epidural. Right. I don't want to have to do Pitocin. Right. I don't want a C-section. Yes. I'm, like, even iffy about having it in an actual hospital. Okay, yeah. You know, like, I'm really ki- I'm trying to go the natural route. Right. But... To your point, you just don't know just don't what's know. gonna happen. My water broke, and they say, you know, you have a certain amount of time after your water breaks. So I'd gone to the hospital, and by that point, it was like six hours. They had checked me, I wasn't dilated at all. So eventually, after going another five or six hours, they were like, we have to give you Pitocin. Now, when you get Pitocin. Now, wait, did they say you had to get Pitocin because of the baby, like, was in They just say, well, you know, when your water breaks, there's a certain kind of time frame, okay. you know, because they can only check you a limited amount of times because every time they check you, there's another cause that you maybe you could get an infection, right? Your water's not there. So that was um, interesting. I had heard from other people that when you heard Pitocin, it kind of meant like an epidural goes hand in hand with that because the contractions, we both like working out. We both work out with Kira. It's like that times a thousand. Ava Chen just said to me from Instagram, she said, have you ever had really bad cramps? I was like, yeah, Mm -hmm. pretty bad. She's like, it's like knives being jabbed into your lower yeah. abdomen, but being, but then being like pulled down. Right, yes, that's a perfect way oh, to describe great. it. So mm. it's like that. Mm. And I did that and I was like, all right, this is cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the epidural now. <laughs> and then I did and I was sitting there and I don't know how many different seasons I've watched of a bunch of different shows just <laughs> chilling as I saw the like Pitocin level go up and up and I didn't feel anything. So I'm just saying I experienced both of them and you kind of just have to go with what feels right Were for you. Were you glad that you did that? A hundred percent. Yeah. Because you were in labor for 33 hours. Yes. yes. I have to say, I'll be completely honest, I watched the video on YouTube 
and I cried like a baby. Oh my God, I still no. cry. <laughs> I know. I see your eyes watering. We're both so emotional so right now. This oh is God. like crazy. There's got to be a warning. Like No, but seriously, because first of all, I felt violated for you mm -hmm. that everybody was in, like you had the cameras, mm -hmm. you had like everybody's watching. It's like, okay, but this is what she wants. Yep. So then I got that out of my head. Right, and it was a controlled situation. Exactly, yeah. and it wasn't like a crowd of people no. watching you. And then I was like, okay, but now she didn't want the Pitocin. Why mm -hmm. is she giving the Pitocin? Mm -hmm. She didn't want the epidural, not just getting the <laughs> <Right>. epidural. <laughs> like yeah. I was literally living yeah. it. And then when the screen went black and you could just read the words mm -hmm. and it was like, Oh my God, she's here. Oh, oh my God. God. I was crying like a child. Like oh I gosh. cannot even explain to you because it was just so beautiful. It's a miracle. It is. It is. It is. And I don't know about you, but throughout my entire pregnancy, I never felt like as if it were real. I thought I was kind of just lying the whole time. Like people were like, oh my God, you're gonna have a baby. I'm like, really? Like I d it hadn't clicked in mm. until you hear the baby cry and the doctor pulls him or her out and you're just like, it's a baby. And they're like, yeah. And you're like, Whoa, I just, that just, that came, whoa. I ate a lot of chips and a lot of, you know what I mean? And that's yeah. what happened yeah. like for nine months. It was wild. What happens when you go home? No, that's, it's not even when you go home. It's when you put the baby in the car seat and you're like, how do we do this? That is like the first thing when you're like, wow. And the nurses can't really help you do that. They can only verbally help you when you're there. So like, it's a whole thing. So it's Matt and I trying to put her in there, but then she looks uncomfortable, but then they need to be uncomfortable a little bit because you want them to be secure and safe over comfort. And it's a whole thing. And then we're driving back. And I remember we left at night and I'm in the back seat with her and he's driving. And anybody that drove like past the speed limit by like whatever, a mile, whatever. I'm like, hello, there's a baby in here. Can you slow down, sir? Get off your phone. Like I was crazy with the window down just like screaming at everybody. I'm like, drive safe. So yeah, I'm gonna come out with like a neon sign for, for new parents and it's babies gonna, in the you're car. You're gonna have the like the bumper sticker on oh, the back of the car. Oh, hell yeah. Sticker them. that car yes. up, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, okay, so you had your baby girl mm -hmm. when? October 8th. Oh, oh! Yes, surprise! Surprise to Instagram. Holy gosh. Note post to self, <laughs> if you wanna I post know. a photo and then you plan on going out even to the grocery <laughs> store for 10 seconds, like, let everybody know when they are born. Because yeah. you posted, so she was born October 8th. Yes. You post, you have a cute little Libra girl. I have a Libra. Oh, and Matt's a Libra too. Oh. I was like, thank God she's not an Aries like me. Oh my God, I love it. Yes, so two Libras. And then you posted on October 20th uh -huh. that you had her. Mm -hmm. And then there was backlash. Yeah, which I was. Were you surprised? I was so surprised. Now I'd seen that before. You know, there'd been people yeah. that had gone out. I remember when Chrissy left her house after whatever, several weeks after Miles was born, she went to dinner and people lost it. Right. And I thought I that was so that. weird back then. I don't know, for some reason it didn't click into me when I was getting ready. Maybe I had a little inclination that I could hear something, but I didn't really care. Um, so yeah, when it all went down, and people were leaving comments like, you are the world's worst mother already. The child needs to be taken to child services. I was like, wow. They said that. Oh yeah, they went crazy. And I was just so, A, I kind of spun it around. And I was like, this is really flattering that you think I'm superwoman and can go yeah. out three days after having my daughter, what, in a diaper still? Like that's, thank you, but no, I'm not. Um, it had actually been a couple weeks after and you know, it felt like it was the right time. We went out for an hour and a half and I was back and not even like, I feel like I have to explain myself, but it bothered me for the other women and new mm. mothers out there that maybe don't have the great support system around mm. them to be like, don't listen to it, you know? And that's what pissed me off mm. is I was like, how dare you already, you know, make a new mom who's already going through a lot of like doubt and guilt, obviously mm -hmm. when she leaves for the first time, but that should be something that's celebrated. You're mm -hmm. living your life, you know, as you did before and as you will continue to with your child. And that's how you've always been. You've just been like, you're a workhorse. You didn't want to have a maternity leave. That's such yeah. a quote you kept saying, like, yeah. I don't want a maternity leave. Yeah. And my first reaction was like, oh, I can't believe she's going back to work mm -hmm. because it's it, what you see on Instagram is all the information you get exactly. or YouTube or whatever it is, exactly. whatever platform you're posting. And you have to remind yourself, everything on Instagram is an altered reality. Yeah. And then it reminded me also, oh, what, what are people going to say when I have my kid? Right. You know? Right. So I apologize for having those thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I mean, everybody goes through their own process. Yeah. And yeah. I'm glad to know yours mm -hmm. and to know... First of all, that you're so strong to handle the haters. Right. You've had them for a yes, while. We yes, all have yes. if you're on social media. Exactly. And you have 
26 point something million dollars. Oh, gosh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, and how many YouTube subscribers? Do you uh, know? That's crazy. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> yes, we did. Anyways. <laughs> But honestly, like, I just want to say thank you because you have proven that, like, it doesn't matter what you put out. Go back to work. Do what you want. Do and what feels about, right to you. You can work from the bed. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing. And, you know, she's the best assistant ever. Oh. Um, it's it's so great. But, yeah, I was actually surprised with how comfortable I was going to be after the fact of just sitting kind of in stillness. Mm -hmm. Like, hours are passing and I'm just staring like, what? this is crazy. And I'm like, oh shit. Okay. I have to reply back to this email, but it's nice because you realize when you have a child, just how fast time passes. That's what I heard. Like it's crazy to me. You see the changes every single day, you know? And are you doing like a photo a day of her? I haven't done a photo a day. And okay. I actually didn't even take that many photos at the beginning because I was just holding her and just like eye contact, just in awe, which is kind of an amazing thing that I was more in the moment than taking the photos. Yeah. But it's, yeah, you are just so comfortable with actually stopping and just being in the moment more than ever. Where did you guys end up on the breastfeeding? Where do we end up? Again. Because I know Matt. So so <laughs> this is the thing. If, you know, at home, everybody who doesn't know about Matt, Matt is Shay's boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You guys have been together for three? Three-ish years. Three We've known years. each other for like 10 plus. Right. Because yeah. he's Canadian yes. and you were Degrassi. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and then you guys got pregnant mm -hmm. and then he had his idea of what he had a lot want? of ideas. <laughs> yeah. He had a lot of ideas. Do tell. And I don't know if you noticed, but in the video when we were in the hospital, he, he had sleeping. the no ovaries, no opinions t-shirt. Yeah. So he did learned his lesson. Did you make that shirt No, he actually did. Oh, bravo, Matt. Yeah, he actually did. He learned his lesson. Um, look, again, just like I didn't really have a birth plan, I didn't know if I was going to be able to breastfeed or not. Right. Who knows? You never know, right. you know? And um, Both of my sisters, the baby wouldn't latch. Right. But my mom breastfed all of us. Yep. So I'm kind of, I'm doing game time decisions. Exactly. And I think that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. So in this quarter, whatever, I don't watch a lot of sports. <laughs> in this quarter <laughs> of the game, um, I, I'm I'm able to right now and it works for us. So yeah, so I'm I'm doing that. So and you are doing bottles. Yes, breastfeeding, oh. also and do you bottles. Like it? I heard it hurts. It hurts, but I just <laughs> want to say something. I don't know if you've ever heard of engorgement. What, is that when your boobs get really hard, like the, this rock? That's when your milk comes in and that, yep, feels is like it, rocks. So, feels like pebbles, hard rocks, just painful. It's painful. And they don't tell you about that. I never knew about that. I thought when I was done with labor, that was it. I was like, okay, maybe with the breastfeeding, you know, crack, nipple, whatever, like all that kind of stuff, maybe painful for a little bit. In the engorgement phase, which was like two days, three days for me, was unreal. So you are just going to massage. Your husband's going to love it. You just need all the massaging. Because the first three days is the colostrum. Yes. And then they harden. Yes. And then the milk comes. Yes. And then you're in pain all over yes. again. Yes. Uh, yes. Get it. Yeah. Noted. And I would say, I don't know, I'm obviously not a lactation nurse, but I was pumping at the beginning. I was so excited. <laughs> I right. was like, oh, cool. This is like, let's see when this comes in. And then Did I you read one of those, like, I the, think I have all, I have all yeah, of them that I'm testing Like out. the one you just put in your bra you have, and you I, can walk yeah, around? Exactly. Does yep. it work? I haven't tried that one okay, yet. Got That's it. Okay. the traveling one. I have the other ones that I'm going to like download you on everything. Um, but it was, it was interesting because I read something else that was like, don't pump maybe this early on because then your body actually thinks, oh, there's two babies. So I need to produce more milk. So I did that at the beginning and I kind of learned my lesson. At least that was my experience. And so I kind of weaned off that until your breasts and the milk all settle, then you can maybe pick that up. This is good knowledge. Yeah. It's so crazy how incredible it is right. that it knows. And when the baby's sick, the saliva that goes back, it tells mm. your body it needs to produce more antibodies, whatever. So it's, oh. it's crazy. Someone told me to start loofing my nipples. Oh, Okay, I didn't hear about that. <laughs> I heard about you want to put that like oil and all that stuff no, on, down like there. the nipple do cream. The perineal massage. Perineal. Per perineal. Mm -hmm. I can't say it. Perineal. Did you do that? Yes. Are you glad you did? Yes. Did you rip? Uh, I had about a couple stitches, but that's okay. it. Oh, yeah. a couple's no, fine. No, exactly. I was really lucky. So I'm going to say it maybe had something <sighs> so to do I'm with gonna that. So I'm going to do the massages down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to massage the nipples. Okay. And yeah, I, I didn't try okay. the loofah. And then you just want to have load up on all the nipple cream you can. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing like this weird things. This is a really sexy because... conversation, by the way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, do you have like the golden milk in your fridge just like lined up, I, dated? I have it dated and it's not lined up, um, okay. but it's definitely in, in a drawer and it's, it's, it's crazy. You're just kind of like, whoa. But you're, I'm also looking at Matt sometimes and I'm like, 
honestly, I carried her for 10 months. I went through the labor. Oh, you now I go through the brace. Oh yeah. And I don't know, but they say for a lot of like first timers, you go past your due date. Right. I was thinking I was going to be a couple weeks early. My That's parents what I came was in thinking. early. Yeah. I don't know, but no, I wasn't. Because you were working out a lot during your pregnancy, right? Yes, but not towards the end. Oh, when did you stop? I kind of stopped around the six month mark. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was active. Like I was doing on my feet or... and travel. Yeah. Oh, I was like, no, I was active, <laughs> like putting the pizza into my mouth and like you getting were not on a flight. Kira. No, Kira. I was getting jealous and texting. Her being like, I'm so jealous of you guys working out. <laughs> oh my gosh. She really is great. She's insane. Yeah, she's, she's, she's insane amazing. and great. Yes. Now, I want to talk about something that you had said. Mm -hmm. And I think that you said the term prepartum yeah. depression. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about this because mm -hmm. I can't say definitively that I went through it. Right. But I can say that I feel like I might have gone through something like it mm -hmm. because here I am. I'm pregnant. It's not that I was trying to get pregnant mm -hmm. or that I wasn't trying, but right. it just happened. So right. it was a surprise. But then all of a sudden my body is like my emotions, mm -hmm. my mind, my body, things mm -hmm. that I always had control mm -hmm. over are now out, totally out of whack. Mm -hmm. I can't talk to anybody about it. Mm -hmm. My husband doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. He's trying to be as supportive as possible. My mom is like, oh, you'll be fine. Yep. I think I was spiraling a little bit yeah. and I was crying a lot. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about like what your experience was. I mean, every single thing that you just said is exactly what I went through. My mom said the same thing and I'd be crying her. She's like, you're just emotional. It's just the hormones. And okay, cool. It might be, but you don't want to hear that. Yeah. Like, yes, it is. Okay. If it is the hormones, I'm still feeling that way. It doesn't yeah. take away from this feeling. And it's completely isolating. And because of the experience that I'd gone through before with the miscarriage, I didn't want to tell even my closest friends that I was right. pregnant this time because the thought of having to go back to them after and be like, I mean, it didn't happen this time again, you know, was really a painful thought for me. So I just thought I'll keep it to myself for as long as possible. And, you know, the staying at home to hide from the paparazzi so they don't get that bump photo or so whatever and leak be it before I, yeah exactly i also am like a control freak and i wanted to have it you know be out when i wanted it to be but it was just really lonely and matt also is traveling all, a bunch and yeah. you're not feeling as secure about your body because there's no bump oh you don't and feel that's sexy. the thing you, feel you, fat. you don't feel sexy you don't have that beautiful <sighs> bump it's just actually you don't even feel fat you just feel heavy heavy like, I said, like, puffy. Oh, that was my thing. I like, said to my friends, I was like, you know, like, a bike tire pump? You just go, Shh. I feel like you just, like, pump it. me up once with that tire. That's pump. exactly it. Yeah. So you just don't feel yourself. And then, you know, it was just really, really lonely. And mm. I personally haven't ever experienced anything like this, but I just didn't want to get out of bed. And I was, I was also putting, having a lot of guilt because I felt so fortunate to be able to be pregnant, you mm -hmm, know? And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I shouldn't be feeling like this. There's mm -hmm. so many people that would love to be in this position. I went through that too. And then, you know, how can I not want this right now? And same with me, we hadn't planned it. And so I was like, is this what I want? Oh my God, is my whole life going to change? It's never going to go back. Now I'm going to be a mom. Uh, is this going to impact my career? It was just all of those thoughts that happen. And, you know, you're walking down the street and you just see all these girls and you know what I mean? And you're like, oh, that was me. That was me. Anyways, no, it's I get a it. really crazy period that I don't think people talk about enough because I heard so much about postpartum, which is also a real right. thing, but I had never heard of, of prepartum pre depression. No, that's why when I heard you say it, I was like, wait, yeah, I, that resonated with me. Yeah. And I had a really crappy day, um, even after we had announced, mm -hmm. and I posted a photo of myself from the side and it yeah. was like extra rolls, new stretch marks. I forgot what I had even said. It was said. a beautiful post, by the Thank way. Thank you. But it was like, I had just finished like a crying session. Yeah. And then I posted that because I think in that moment, what I wanted to do was use social media to find a community Mm -hmm. that wasn't just about like body positivity. Right. It was more so right. about like, I'm in this space that I'm not happy, but I'm going to talk about it. Exactly. And it was a reality check for me too. It was hard. It was really hard. And that's why I think also like with that post, I wanted to do the YouTube show with Matt, even yeah. though I had never been really public about him or really any of that kind of stuff in my life. But I felt like there's so many of us on this journey and it's also individual, all of our experiences. But at mm -hmm. the same time, there's a lot of common feelings that we feel throughout this process that isn't spoken about enough. So, Okay, I have two more questions yeah. in this realm. 
First of all, have you ever in your life felt the community of motherhood? Like like in any other community? I, I mean, it's I- It's wild. What? Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's a whole club. It's a whole club. And but like I said, it's it can be great and it can also be bad. Yeah. Because a lot of those comments that we spoke about earlier weren't coming from guys oh and gosh. other people. They were coming from other moms, which is, was like the heartbreaking part of all this. And I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. So what I'm talking about, yeah, now now social right? media, everybody is an expert. Exactly. Didn't you know that? Exactly. But when I tell other people, it's like, oh, let me send you my list. Yes. Oh, let me tell you about my doctor. Yes. What's your birth plan? Yes. It's like, wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay, because I haven't gone on the negative stuff because I haven't had the kid yet. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I think it's when you pop the kid out. No, but I'm still going to be real with you. Like, even after this, I'm going to be texting you a bunch okay. of stuff. Okay. You know, because I think it's good to know the good. Look, at the end of the day, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And, you know, again, it's such a personal experience that I almost even feel bad too when I talk to other people. I'm like, it's going to be the best day of your life because who knows? But what I can say is it's an experience that you've never had. And that I can definitely say because this is your first child. So, it's just incredible. I'm so excited. Yes. Okay, the, the last part of this conversation is I want to know how you and Matt met because I don't know the backstory. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Because you I said don't... you knew each other from way back. Yeah. And you've been together for three years. Yeah. Um, we've been together for three years. I know. I don't know if I've ever talked about this before. <laughs> Just giving you the scoop. <laughs> we both were from Toronto. Oh, and okay. Yeah. We met when I was like 19 ish. We have a lot of common friends being from Toronto. And. Um, Toronto. Toronto, see, exactly. And I think I was doing bottle service at a mutual friend's party. And um, the next day he kind of, he called me and we connected and we realized we lived down the street from one another, which was crazy. And, you know, so we had our moments a couple of times in my younger years, yeah. didn't work out. I ended up coming to LA and we, um, yeah, rekindled it a little while ago. So it's wild, but it's kind of cool. Cause I'm also like, you knew me in Toronto, 19, and right. we have a lot of like history. So he knew great. you before the pop off. It's yeah. <laughs> before I moved to LA, he knew me. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, my husband and I met before the pop off too. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's nice. It's nice. Then, you know, it's nice. It's like you can grow together. Exactly. They can be your actual cheerleader. Yeah. You know. I yeah. Mean, you can really build something. Right. And we're both Canadians, so he doesn't make fun of me for the words that I say. <laughs> I'm like, tomorrow, tomorrow. Sorry, sorry. You know. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Okay. So your reality show is called Almost Ready. Yes. And you really put. Everything. everything out there yeah diapers i you yeah okay so you were actually wearing diapers towards the end of your pregnancy yeah i think i still am right now <laughs> from well, pretty you sure have to, right? yeah no no it's not even for that it was oh. like that those kind of diapers are done thank goodness but the other time it's just like a comfortable thing i think i just enjoy them <laughs> wait so like let's just say you're on an airplane you'd be like I mean, hello, I was working on my show up until I was six months and having to go to the bathroom, being on location, you know, I'd ask where the nearest washroom was or whatever outhouse was. And they'd be like, oh, it's like five, 10 minute walk. Well, no. when you're doing that 50 no. times a day because your bladder is uncontrollable, it was really uncomfortable. So I came up with a solution. And, and that was, was to wear diapers. <laughs> so can we just talk about peeing in a diaper? Oh, yeah. As an adult? Let me say this. You don't want to do it like a baby. You can't really get like three of them. <laughs> <laughs> I actually only think I've maybe done it like once. Um, okay. Let's be honest. And was it in the night or was it, were you like, it was 100% in, in the night? No, it was oh, okay. 100% in the night. I can imagine you looking in somebody's eyes being oh, like, oh, I, I joked all the time I'm with Monica. Right it was my status. I was just <laughs> like this. When I look at you and I'm really comfortable, you just know she's like, you're gross. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, hello, you're going to the bathroom a million times in the night. So I know, I know. Skip one I of those times. Flew here from New York and I think I got up 10 times yeah. just to pee. And sometimes I'll see. it's just a dribble. Yeah. And you're like, really? That's the where dribble? the diaper comes in handy. <sighs> Actually, you know what? A dribble and a diaper is probably right? not that uncomfortable it's to not. sit in for a couple hours. No, exactly. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm sending you after this. <laughs> yes! <laughs> but now enough of the mommy stuff because yeah. I know, you know, we could, I could literally go on and on. You worked very hard mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you had this breakthrough moment of Pretty Little Liars as Emily and you switched gears. Mm -hmm. You went from TV, film to YouTube. Mm -hmm. What was your fan base like? Were they cool with it? My fan base was awesome towards that. It was a different type of fan base. It doesn't always cross over from even the other social platforms. Um, 
But it was interesting because even just like fellow actors, I think, were kind of in awe. It was done, you know, I started my YouTube channel before The Rock did, before Will Smith did, before it was like before cool it was a for thing an actor. To do. Yeah. And I think at that point when I had launched it, people were kind of like, oh, that's cute. So you don't want to act anymore? Oh, she's going to YouTube. Oh, she's an influencer. Yeah, exactly. And I got a lot of that. And I didn't really care because I kind of saw the trajectory just kind of moving in that direction of people being a lot more social and wanting to really be um, a lot more personal with the content they're putting out, you know? And I wanted to try my hand in it. And so like everything else, if I want to do something, I kind of just do it. And that's what happened with YouTube. But then I started to enjoy it because it was a platform where I really could be in control of the content I was putting out there. And it was, you know, longer form content than just a caption on Instagram or a minute video on Instagram or whatever well, it, it was. it shot so beautifully. I mean, it shot like a reality show. There's like multi-camera. Yeah. The sound is perfect. Thank you. The light is gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, it might as well Thank be on you. Netflix or HBO. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but it's fun. And the traveling stuff from that. With yes. Like when I started the Shaycation videos, those were so much fun because I really wanted to be able to share the experiences I was having and the cultures that I was getting to witness right. when I would travel. Because it is a big deal. I mean, we've had the privilege to travel the world yeah. and get paid to travel yep. the world. Or yep. First of all, where's your favorite place to go? Oh my gosh. That's Give me so like top difficult. three. Top three. Italy. Yeah. Oh, duh. We yeah. were both in Italy. Italy this summer. Oh, we were at yeah. the same time? Yeah. Oh, were you in a Malfi? Okay. I was in a Malfi. I was. Oh, yeah. Yes. I love it. You were like, hey, bump. Oh, and yeah. I was like, I can't pull my bump out yet. <laughs> I was still hiding. <laughs> I, was I, was I, envious. Was, I was doing my bump. I was eating the the prosciutto, which you're not supposed to do, the cheese, which I mm. found out after. I got a whole bunch it. of and black for that. I drank wine. Yeah. Sue me. I had a glass. But no, a Italy glass. was amazing. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I would say Tokyo is another incredible place. Oh, I want to go there. Oh, it's incredible. You haven't been yet? No, Oh, girl. it's amazing. I know you've been. Because yes. Because that's where you I did a little a, research. Yes, exactly. I have a whole a whole um, travel list that you need to go and visit. And then I would say, I don't know, Africa is just incredible no, as well. No, but Africa, where? Come on. Okay, you want like the deep. Yeah, I mean, like I love Morocco. I love Seychelles. I yes. also love South Africa. Right. South Africa is incredible. Yeah. I would say I was, my favorite place in Africa is maybe Kenya. <gasps> Just because of what I was doing, like Giraffe Manor over there. Mm. And yeah, there's like... Okay. Yeah. But you were in Tokyo. Yes. Because you were doing loads of research. Loads of research. For your travel line. It's called BASE. Yes. Am I saying it right? Yes, you are. So talk to me about BASE. Like where where did the adventure of, first of all, wanting to create a company come Mm -hmm. from? You know, I feel like as much as I've always loved acting, there was also a huge entrepreneurial side in me as well. Um, You know, the whole multi-hyphenate and being able to do that. I love that. I love being able to wear different hats. And for me, because I had had traveled so much and obviously had purchased so many different travel accessories and luggage and all of that, I wanted to create something that I couldn't find out in the market myself. Mm. And for me, it was coming out with something that was affordable and yet chic and functional. And I would be on airplanes and just kind of sitting there like, huh, this little, you know, thing in front of me is really disgusting because I'd put my AirPods in there and then I'd lose them. I'd put my hand in and then some sticky snack from a kid Mm -hmm. who was sitting there prior would come out with it. And I'd kind of just sit there and then I started drawing and doing all these little doodles on airplane napkins. And that's kind of how it started to happen. And I remember sitting down with my team and they were talking to me about possibly wanting to come out with something in the beauty, you know, world. Mm -hmm. And my mind would just kept drifting back to travel. And I was like, you know what? This is truly my love. I could talk travel forever um, and, and even just travel accessories. And this is truly what I love. So that's kind of how base came uh, came about. And I just absolutely love it. You just have your first year anniversary? Yeah. First year was October 17th. And you have five employees? Yeah, about five or six, yeah. Wow. It's a really small team. Which but that's is, great. It's it's amazing. And the fact that even, you know, I can just entrust in them right now, being a little bit, taking a little breather and, you know, just knowing that they're crushing it is awesome. But, you know, it goes with everything. If you're really passionate and you love something, then, you know, it's doing well is just the cherry on top. Talk to me about building the team and the business aspect of it and being an actual businesswoman. Yeah, it's crazy because this is different from anything else. It's not an endorsement. It's not a collab. This is my company. 
And with that, I really wanted to be involved in all aspects, not just the sexy stuff of like this photo shoot, this launch, this on social oh, media. Oh, I'm picking the fabric. Right, exactly. Um, I wanted to be involved with, you know, the spreadsheets, the, so the tariffs, all of mm. the stuff that maybe isn't so fun, you know, having to figure out how many, the inventory, the warehouse, all of that kind of stuff too. Because to be involved in the way that I wanted to be, I needed to understand everybody's mm -hmm. roles in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I could speak about it and know what I was talking about when we were in meetings. But again, because I love it, nothing was boring to me. It was all interesting. And this isn't something that I've ever done before either. I didn't right. go to school for business. I didn't go to school for design. But I learned about it from people that I trusted and that I brought onto the team. And we've been really fortunate to be doing well. And Forbes yeah. actually reported that BASE has seen 200% growth yeah. in its launch. Even when I got that call, I was like, okay, this may not be the cover just yet, but this is so Next exciting, year, right? 2020 um, cover. Oh my gosh. It was so cool to be able to talk about it in our first year, which is insane for a lot of new companies. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was, yeah, really proud of, of my team for that and just super excited too. I mean, walking into the airport or being away somewhere or being at the gym and I see somebody with a bag or a luggage or whatever it is, it's like such an awesome feeling. And mm -hmm. I'm always that freak that runs up to them. I'm like, hey, love your backpack. <laughs> and a lot of the times, you know, which is actually even better, they don't know that I have anything to do with it. They don't know who the hell I am. And they're That's like, awesome. thanks, it's a really great backpack. I'm like, cool. Like, <laughs> this is just so awesome, you know, to really witness people. We say, um, seen it in the wild. So whenever I see somebody wearing it, I'll seen take it a photo or my friends will take a photo. They'll send it. They'll be like this girl in front of me. And I'm like, wow, it's in the wild. That's sick. So, so you just launched hard cases? Yes. So well, we had hard cases. We're launching a new in between uh, size 26 inch. And then is that carry on? That's a check in. Okay. Okay. And then um, we're doing diaper bags for Duh. first quarter of 2020. Oh, so I need one. you know what you're getting. Okay. Yes. A hundred percent. So I like, it's been fun because I'm now using it and I've got every single diaper bag on the market. <gasps> and so to kind of just take what I've liked yes. from all of them and then add in my own ideas is awesome. What's the number one thing that I need as a new mom, by the way? Drifting okay. for one second. Honestly, and this is not an ad. I bought them. My breast friend. It's this pillow that you put because you're at when you're at the hospital. If you choose to breastfeed, they'll just line you with pillows, and you have your baby here, and you're, it's kind of awkward. But if you go home, you maybe you don't have the same pillows. If you have this thing, it's like a strap pillow. It clips in here. It has a little thing for remote, some snacks, whatever you want in this little pocket, and then like humps because you're going to be like this and it's so comfortable. So I bought three of them for like different rooms in my yeah. house and it's amazing. Okay. So again, my yeah. breast friend. My breast friend. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So what is the next thing for base? What are you guys working on? I think just organically evolving with whatever I feel inspired by and what I feel like the consumers are wanting, you know, mm -hmm. and that's been really cool too to be so interactive on social media yeah. with base and their customers. It's cool because I can actually ask them and see what they want. And now with the polls and all of that, I can get so so much feedback with everything. So um, I think, you know, as I continue to evolve, as our fan base continues to evolve, fan base, there's Hello. a lot of different puns hey, with fans. it. Yeah, it's, um, it's gonna be really cool. So maybe more in the mom world for a little bit and then who knows? Who knows, maybe yeah. it's like another kid. Who knows, yeah, exactly. Backpacks for kids. Yes. Oh, <gasps> cute. Yeah. You probably already did that yeah. one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a hard worker and I am so, I don't know, I look up to you for that because mm -hmm. being a mom now and you you have your hats on so for so many different avenues, where does your determination come from? Loving what I do. Mm. I love it. And I feel so fortunate to be able to do what I've always dreamt of doing. Mm. And that's it. If I didn't love what I was doing, it would be really difficult mm. because yeah, I do feel like, especially now, um, there's not a lot of sleep, but at the same time, I don't mind it. I'm like, I'll do that later. I love so much getting to wake up and work with people, even if it's a glam session. Sometimes for me, those are even more fun than the actual events themselves that I go to. Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, you know, and I love, I just, I love working with people. I love being interactive. I love social media. And I just feel like once you find what it is that makes you happy, that's all the fuel you need. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I wear a lot of hats, but I just feel super grateful that I can. It's um, awesome. So love what you do. Love what you do. Period. Period. Yeah. I love that. What's one thing that you wish people knew about you? Being an open book, but also having a private side? Mm -hmm. I 
feel like I put so much of it out there know, to be a honest. Hard question. You know what I mean? I don't know. I feel like less about, you know, figuring out something that maybe I haven't shared with with people, but more so about I feel like as the older you get, it just gets better. Mm. So it's not even like this is a fun fact about me that you may not know, but something that I didn't know when I was maybe younger that I think is just it just, I don't know about you, but like when I hit 30, everything was just amazing. I mean, how old are you now? 32. <gasps> I'm 32. Are you really? 87? 87! Yes! yes! Oh my Ooh. gosh. Wait, what month again? October 30th. Okay. I just yeah. turned 32. You just You're... did. I'm older than you. April 10th. Shut up. Yeah. April yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I don't know. I've just, I've loved being in my 30s and yeah. It just feels no, like- No, I 100% agree with you. When I hit 30, it was like this like, Eureka. Yeah. I am a woman. Yeah. And, and you care less about what other people think, oh. you know? Yeah. Like I look back at my younger self and I'm like, oh, you shouldn't have cared. So you know what I mean? There's so much but that's pressure. that's what the 20s are for. 100%. You get yeah. through the 20s, you'll be fine. Exactly. Exactly. So what's next? What's happening for Shay Mitchell? Who knows? Ooh. Album. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Music video drops tomorrow. I love it. Um, no, you never know. I don't know. Just enjoying this time right now with her. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's... What's her name? Atlas. Atlas. I mean, hello. Oh my God, it makes sense. Atlas. Love travel. Yeah, Atlas Noah Babel. Oh. And I have to tell you, it was actually a funny story with her name because our really good friends had their daughter about a couple years ago and they were telling us their list of names and they're like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Atlas came up. And right when she said it, I was like, oh. I hate that name. Yeah. I was like, you know what? <laughs> right. I really think you should go with that one. And she ended up doing it and it's perfect for her daughter. <laughs> so thank you. But I was like, oh my God, Atlas. I'm like, Matt, that's it. He's like, that's it. I'm like, perfect. We didn't get pregnant for like another couple of years after that. But when it happened, you know, we've known this entire time. So I felt so bad lying to people like, what's your name? I'm like, mm, we don't have one yet. Meanwhile. So what? We've known no, the whole people time. People steal names. They do. We're not saying, we're not saying Good. our baby's name until they come out. Great. Yes, exactly. I recommend that. Um, so. so the last thing we do on Pretty Big Deal, it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a live boldly lightning round. Okay. I love it. What's the last pretty penny you spent? Last pretty penny I spent uh, something for the baby. Oh God, I think it was like a little purse for her or something crazy. Aww. Yeah, I think that's probably the last thing. Pretty penny. Here yeah. she is, like a month old. Here's oh my God, purse. I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, biggest deal breaker. Uh, ignorance. Yeah, that's yeah. a good deal breaker. Yeah. And because you're a pretty big deal, and I only have pretty big deals on pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. What's a pretty big deal to you? Family and friends. Oh yeah, yeah. that's important. Yeah. Family, friends, yeah. Shay, thank you so thank much for coming. So much. Thank you for getting out of mommy world oh my God, to come I, sit with I'm me. I'm like, okay, I can feel the time's up. I was just going to say, do you need to go pump? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't I know. Grow. I was kind of like this. They're growing. Like you growing. see a vein. Yes, you do. It's like, <laughs> mm. um, yeah, this thank is the you. longest that I've been away right now. So I know. I'm like, I feel so honored. Oh my God. Thank you so wow. much. So I know excited. what that means. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Don't forget to join the conversation on social. Follow Pretty Big Deal on Instagram and Twitter and send us all your questions and comments. We want to hear from you. 